Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at using the animation controller in Unity. I have this little basic scene set out with a player, with a little player base model that I can move around in uh, and do all this kind of stuff, but the mu movement obviously looks very uh, solid, very rigid, it's, it's not really fluid. Uh, so I have a few animations here, uh, as you can see in the side panel here, and if we play them, uh, they will, you know, they'll play, uh, that one's probably not the best one to show, you know, we've got a running animation, uh, we've got a little gesture animation, and we've, all, we've also got a walking, uh, animation, so all of that looks pretty good, and we'll see how we can get that incorporated into our game. In this video, we're going to look at three topics, we're going to be looking at the overall animated component, uh, animation layering, and then also animation variables. Uh, so let's get right into it. Okay, so to get started, we're going to go window and then animation, and we're going to create a animator window. Uh, we're going to drag it here. So currently it's empty because we do not have an animator to use. Uh, luckily, it's very easy to do. All we got to do is create uh, and then find animator, which should be down here. Uh, animation controller. Uh, animator controller, sorry. Uh, and we're just going to call this player. Uh, there's probably a more suitable name, uh, if, like in most games, but for this, I'm just going to call it uh, player. So here we have layers and parameters. We're going to worry about those in a second, uh, but we're going to drag all of these in. Uh, so uh, one, two, uh, three, and four. Now they all have uh, pretty default naming, so we're going to go through and name them. Uh, so to name them, uh, you just got to select the import uh, and then go into the animation panel here, scroll down, and then you have clips and you can rename them here. So this one, uh, let's look, this is idle. Cool, let's drag these all in. Alright, actually, gesture we won't have in this one, and I'll show why uh, a little bit. So, how does this inspector work? Well, it's basically a flow graph, right? So, you can see these arrows, and that's the direction in which the animation plays. Uh, and, for instance, if our animation is looping, uh, which we do want these animations to loop, so if you haven't, uh, select loop time on the animations, uh, on the ones that you do want to loop. Uh, and what looping is, is just it restarts the animation every time it ends. So for something like a gesture, you probably wouldn't, like an emote, you probably wouldn't want it to loop. Uh, whereas, you know, run, walk, breathing, they're all continuous animations, so you want them to loop. So in the parameters, we're going to click add, and we'll go boolean, and we'll click this is move, and we'll call this is moving. Uh, and what that is, is a boolean, and we can use that in the transitions between each of these animator nodes. Uh, so let's right click the idle and go make transition and we're going to transition to the walk we'll do the walk first and we can implement the running later uh so to implement the running we'll actually just add a is running so idle to walk and then we'll right click walk to go to idle and basically this is like a flowchart obviously like i said before so it goes in the arrows it follows the arrows right uh, so currently there's actually no conditionals for the arrows so basically, it's just going to go between idle and walk <laughs> continuously. So we want some way to control it, right? So we can add a condition here and we can go is moving is equal to true. So if we're moving, it's going to go to walk. But obviously, uh, the arrow coming back has no condition. So let's add is moving is equal to false to make it so when it's n it only goes back to idle when it's not moving. So how do we control these? So luckily, uh, there's code that we can do for this. So... Uh, in third, in our character controller, it would obviously look different for you. Uh, we can add uh, a public animation animator. <laughs> well, I haven't used this in a while. Public animator, and we'll just call it anim. You know what? Let's actually do this inside fixed update. We'll go if uh, if rb dot velocity. <laughs> we'll, we'll just do if rb dot velocity dot x uh, or rb dot velocity dot z because we don't want the y is more than zero uh then we can set animator or animate uh dot uh set a uh, bool and here we can input the name of the bool so i think it's is moving and then we can set the very like the 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 value on it we want to set so in our case it's true right uh and then we go else and we can just copy paste this and set it equal to false and, and it really is that easy 
Uh, if you want to set a float variable, you go uh, anim dot set float. Uh, anim dot is a uh, is there set int? <laughs> yep, in trigger, and then trigger trigger is just like a one off uh, trigger that happens. And we'll go over triggers in a second. Cool. So now let's uh, add this to our character. So under player, let's add an animator uh, component, and let's add in our player uh, animator controller. Awesome, and then let's drag this in to our third-person character controller script, and let's click play. And as you can see, our breathing idle animation is playing, but it's, it's playing very delayed. Um, and the reason for that is basically how the animator works, is there's something called exit time. Uh, it, it's not going to transition until the last animation has completed, which we actually don't want. Uh, so let's remove has exit time on each of these in order uh, to let them instantly transition rather than finishing the animation before transitioning. Uh, some cases has exit time is important uh, if you're going through, I don't know, animation and cutscenes or whatever. Uh, but for our case, it doesn't really help. So as you can see, uh, we can we can then do this and the, the, the character speed is probably a bit too fast. Uh, so let's slow it down. That looks about bit. That looks about good. Uh, so instead of the x is more than zero, we got to absolute the values, and that should that fixes it. Cool. Let's add in sprinting. Um, so <laughs> I actually haven't added sprinting for this. So public float run speed. I'll just quickly add this in. Now that I've got a basic sprint system set up, let's add it in. So in our input on when uh, we get our shift key input, uh, we can go uh, anim.set boolean and we'll go uh, is running. Uh, let's set this equal to true. And then when we're not, let's simply set this equal uh, to false. Cool, so how do we get the running set up, the animation that is? Uh, so what we can do uh, is transition from idle to run. Um, well, actually, yeah, we can dress it, transition from walk to run and run to walk. Um, and because we'll always be moving if we are running. So let's set running is equal to if running is equal to true. Uh, and then we go is running is equal to to false and let's see how this works remember to turn off exit time for both of the animations and as you can see it, it works pretty well um and it even stops when we when we stop moving uh and it looks pretty good while when we're doing it so now that we have this part set up let's get a simple animation layering working where our hand gestures while the rest of our character does its own thing under animator we can go into layers and here we have our base layer uh, and then we can add one and let's just call this arm what we're gonna need is we need a avatar mask because we can go on to rig uh, and we can go avatar definition and we go create from this model uh, let's go apply so now if we look in here, as you can see, we'll see an avatar mask or an avatar here. So let's create a avatar mask and let's call this arm. And under the avatar mask, we can go under transform and use skeleton from. And here we can import uh, the breathing idle avatar and we go import skeleton. And as you can see, it's going to add in all of these uh, and it's going to have a lot of <laughs> useless ones. Uh, but we're going to disable everything uh pretty much <laughs> toggle all uh and then we'll just keep going up until we find the right shoulder we probably want it to use all of the right shoulder right arm and all of these and that looks like it should be good so let's apply this avatar mask to our uh object and let's also give it a weight of one so it's going to overlay uh, yeah, override. We want it to override, not add. Cool. So let's also just bring in our uh, current. So we need to basically drag these in uh, and put them in here. Um, and we obviously set this as layer default state. Uh, so let's select that there. 
Uh, and let's also just quickly do this. So we'll grab the dismissing gesture, and this is the gesture we want to use, and let's add a trigger, uh, and we'll just label it gesture. Cool, so let's add, make a transition, uh, and let's simply go uh, add a condition, and we'll just go gesture. Cool. Uh, and the back arrows, we can obviously just set up the, um, the conditions as according to what it's going to so idle is as moving is equal to false walk is as moving equal to true and then running is obviously is running is equal to true awesome uh, and how do we set up this gesture so what we can do is inside that i'm just going to do it in the third person animation control or the third person character controller it's simple uh and let's just create next to our uh sprinting we can go if uh, and we'll just create a input. So if input dot uh, get this update to Visual Studio Code annoys me, or it, this uh, change, just make a space key, and we'll go anim dot set trigger this time, and this one is just gesture. And we actually don't need to input any data into it for the second override because it doesn't have one. All it is is a trigger uh, of with a string as the name. Now, uh, the one going to the gesture should have exit time, but we want the gesture uh, or the emote to uh, finish. So we do want the uh, it has exit time to uh, be on for when it doesn't, for when it comes back. Now, if I click uh, play and click space, it's going to do the gesture. Uh, and it looks pretty good. I can even do it while running or walking. Probably you could include the head into this uh, animation. So let's add the neck. Let's add the head. There we go. Looks pretty good. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. It helps a lot. We just passed 600 subs on our way to a thousand. Hopefully before the end of the year. Uh, Join the Discord if you want to hang out with us and talk about code and uh, maybe even do some coding challenges at some point with me. Should be kind of fun. Uh, anyway, guys, have a great day and I'll see you next time. Also, if you guys want this engine air, you can find it in the link in the description. I found it on Sketchfab and this guy made a pretty cool model.